Warning: The following fanfic reading is for mature audiences only. It contains mature subjects such as grief, death of loved ones, discrimination, alcoholism, and gore. Viewer's discretion is advised. The Legend of Spike: Discourse Mask, written by Diablo Guapo, Chapter Nine: Bargaining Cycle. Day two. Dawn of the second day. Forty-eight hours remaining. Spike's eyes were bloodshot, and one of them twitched every few seconds. Pound and pumpkin cake had cried all through the night. The inconsolable falls even took shifts with the screaming. Pound cake would cry for an hour. Pumpkin cake would cry the next hour. And then they would cry together the following hour. Wash, rinse, and repeat throughout the entire night, and you'll get a village full of insomniacs. Spike dragged himself out of Big Macintosh's bed and headed to the window. The sky was gray with clouds, and it was snowing outside. But at least the storm had calmed down a bit. Spike called upon the power of the Earth Pony Mask. And went through the uncomfortable transformation process again. No matter how many times he went through the change, Spike would never get used to it. It hurt, and it left him gasping for air every time. Spike opened the cabin's door and headed out into the snow. As he made his way down the streets of the village, he couldn't help but cringe at the sound of the crying falls. Something had to be done. The relentless shrieking was just as much of a curse as the unnatural winter that had frozen the valley. Spike headed to the cake's cottage, hoping to sell this once and for all. As he passed by the other houses on the way. He noticed that the other ponies had also been apparently denied any sleep from the noise. Some were lying on their beds, covering their heads with pillows. Some were banging their foreheads against walls. One pony sat on her haunches, rocking herself back and forth, with an insane grin on her face and mumbled incoherently. Spike hadn't seen a pony so loopy from sleep deprivation since the time Applejack tried to handle Applebug season all by herself. That's it. This and now. Come on, let it go. We got to get the element of generosity. No, those fools have cost me the one chance I had to sleep in a decent bed since I got here. I'm gonna do something about it. Yep. Spike knocked on the door, and a very tired-looking cupcake opened the door. Spike thought the mare he passed on the way looked exhausted, but she was nothing compared to the state of the mother of the crying foals. Her mane was a mess, with strands of pink hair going in different directions. If her eyes were any wider, they would pop out of their sockets. She had the Pegasus colt in one foreleg, and the unicorn filly hanging at her side in a baby carrier. They were both still screaming. Good morning. What can I do for you, Big Mac? Your foals. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Did they keep you up all night? Yep. It seemed that Spike channeled the large Earth Pony's mannerisms when he used the power of the mask. I'm really sorry, but I can't seem to get them to settle down. They haven't calmed down for more than an hour since Carrot left. Where did he go? Ever since we thought that you died the other day, Carrot took it upon himself to follow in your footsteps and went to solve the problem himself. He said that he would be back in a few days, but he hasn't returned yet. She tried to calm her children, gently rocking them. Daddy will be home soon. Daddy will be home soon. 
Spike's annoyance changed into sympathy for the falls. He could also feel his trodden and counterpart reflect on his own situation. He can never be reunited with his mother figure, Twilight Sparkle. He was dead, and she doesn't even know what has become of him. Even though he had the chance to tell her, he couldn't bear to tell her the truth. Spike, we got to help them! Those folks need their father! Yep. He must have gone to the shrine by himself. Maybe we can find him on the way. I'll find him. <sighs> oh, thank you. I've been so worried about him. I told him not to go, but he insisted that he had to go. I'll be back, Spike said as he headed out of the door. Spike made his way down the road that headed out of the village. The weather wasn't as bad as it was the day before, but it still wasn't pleasant. Thankfully, Big Macintosh's larger frame was more resilient and could endure the cold better than the small dragon, or his unicorn cold's alternate form could. However, it was still cold. With each gust of wind, Spike would shiver. <laughs> Spike came to a fork in the road. To the south was the road back to Clocktown. The other road headed further into the mountains. Big Mac, does this road lead to the shrine? Hey, yep. Surely he was a stallion of few words. Spike looked down the road towards his destination. The mountains that housed the shrine were taller and more foreboding than the rest of the mountains in the valley. The same dark clouds circled them as they did the day before. Spike suddenly remembered the sound he heard coming at them when he first arrived at the valley yesterday. <laughs> Whatever is in those clouds must be causing it to snow here. What do you think it is? I'm not sure, but I thought I saw something flying around in them the other day. Do you think it's Nightmare Moon? I don't know. Remember, we saw her on top of the clock tower yesterday. Er, uh, that is the other yesterday. You know, the first, first day. Oh, yeah. It was like she could see us looking at her through the telescope. Do y'all think she could have left and then come back? I guess it's possible. Who's to say she's going to spend all three days waiting on the clock tower? Then, she could be waiting for us at the shrine. Do you think she's aware of what we're doing? I hope not. She could probably bring down the entire mountain on top of us if she wanted to. <sighs> But I don't think that's the case. I think she doesn't know that we have two elements of harmony already. How do you figure? The portion of Princess Celestia's power said that it came with us back to the past so that I could keep her up to date with our progress when it merged with her. Otherwise, the princess wouldn't remember meeting us or what we've done. So, if Nightmare Moon doesn't know we're here, then what's lying around in the blizzard? The three-in-one body party of adventurers made their way up the steep mountain trail. The path was carved into the mountainside and was rather narrow. Spike's hoof slipped on the edge, causing a rush of panic in all three of the mines. <gasps> Spike looked over the edge at the sheer drop into the valley below. It was so far down and obscured by the falling snow that he couldn't see the bottom. Somewhere down there, Big Macintosh had met his doom. Backing away from the edge, he continued up the trail with more caution. The snow crunched with every step. The wind's strength increased as they went further into the storm. The dark clouds circled above like an angry vortex. There was a sudden gust of wind that was so strong that Spike had to brace himself against the side of the mountain. Careful. That's how I win. Spike, please be careful. 
They came to a point in the trail where they could see their goal in the distance. The path went across a bridge to another mountain. From there, the path went up an even steeper trail up to the top. As Spike looked up, he saw that the mountain was in the center of the storm. The shrine that was on the summit was hidden by the swirling tempest. It appeared that a shrine was in the eye of the storm. That meant that Spike would not only have to walk up a steeper trail, but also had to walk through the worst part of the storm in order to reach the element of generosity. Before Spike could press onward, he heard a noise. He looked to the side of the road and saw a pony shivering in a cavity in the mountainside. The pony had an amber coat, an orange mane, and wore a bow tie. Given his identity away, he had three carrot cakes for a cutie mark. Spike briefly wondered if that name that parents gave to their foal had any effect on determining what a pony's cutie mark would be. Would Twilight have a cutie mark of a starburst if she wasn't named Twilight Sparkle? How about Applejack and her cutie mark of three apples? Mr. Cake, can you hear me? The stallion made no reply, but continued to shake uncontrollably. His coat looked more blue than its normal amber color. We got to get him back to the village! Yup. Spike looked from the hyperthermic pony to the mountain. It was disappointing to have come so far just to turn back now. Spike had planned on finding him on the way back. Maybe the storm would have ended once he had found the element, making it easier to find the lost pony. When he saw the pony, he originally hoped that he would have been fine until he made it back from the shrine. But the way he was shivering and was unresponsive meant that he didn't have much time left. He did tell Mrs. Cake that he would find her husband and bring him back. And he would do exactly that. We've come so close, but you're right. Let's take him back. Spike lifted the pony onto his back and headed down the path back to the valley. It was a good thing that Big Macintosh had incredible strength and endurance, even for an earth pony, for it made carrying Mr. Cape so much easier. It also helped that he was now headed downhill. During the whole trip, Mr. Cape didn't say a word. The only sound that came from him was the chattering of his teeth. At least it meant that he was still alive. Spike had reached the start of the trail and was in the valley again. It was starting to get late and the blizzard was starting to pick up again. The distant image of the village began to become hidden by the snow blowing in the wind. Even with Big Macintosh's strength, Spike wasn't sure he could make it to the village and he knew that the pony on his back definitely wouldn't. He had to find shelter somewhere before it got too dark. Spike looked around for a cave. He could get some branches from a tree and start a fire. Maybe that will help Carrot Cake. As he thought about this, he saw something in the distance. It was a wagon. Spike ran through the snow to seek shelter for him and Mr. Cake. When he reached the wagon, he noticed an insignia of a wand above the door. Oh, great. Of all the ponies in this world, find her! Any port in the storm, no knock on the door! Uh. Spike groaned, but did as he was told. He knew this wasn't going to end well. A masculine voice called from inside, catching Spike by surprise. Shut up! Get the door! There's some pony outside! The door opened and Spike saw a huge, muscle-bound white pegasus with tiny wings. Inside, an azure unicorn mare with a silvery blue mane rested on a mattress. Well, don't just stand there! Come in! You're letting the cold in! Spike went inside and set Mr. Cake down. <laughs> Thank you. It was nothing. The great and powerful Trixie is glad to help those less fortunate than her. 
Even when she was being generous, she was still conceited. Yeah! Shut up! Make yourself useful and help that pony to the fireplace! Can't you see that he's freezing to death? Honestly, you have as much brains as a bag of rocks! The large pegasus carried Mr. Cake to the fireplace and wrapped a blanket around him. Spike knew that it would take more than that to bring him back to full health. Full health? A light turned on on his head as he got an idea. That's it! Sakura's potion! He pulled out the flask and opened the top. Inside, the blue potion was frozen solid. Unless he wanted to give Mr. Cake a blue potion smoothie, he would have to heat it up. He placed the flask by the fireplace so its contents could thaw. After it had melted, he held the flask to the Earth Pony's trembling lips and helped him take a drink from it. His amber color returned and his shaking began to cease. Soon, the pony fell asleep beside the fireplace. Spike also took a swig from the flask so that he could recover his strength. He immediately felt the effects of the potion. Energy rushed through his body, and he felt as though he tried to buck a zap apple tree. What were you doing out there anyways? I have to stop the curse that's been placed on the valley. A curse? So that explains all the snow. The great and powerful Trixie was on her way to grace the village with her presence and amaze them with her astounding feats of magic. But then we got caught in this blizzard. The great and powerful Trixie? Sounds like some pony thinks highly of herself. Ugh. She sounds like a braggart to me. <sighs> you have no idea. Spike groaned as he rolled his metaphorical eyes. In my world, she came to our town showing off her tricks, boasting that she was the most magical unicorn in all of Equestria. Then these two idiot cults, Woke and Ursa Minor, wanted to see her, quote, vanquish it. Did she? No! It rampaged through Ponyville until Twilight returned it back to its cave. Trixie came back a second time to challenge Twilight to a magic duel. Did she agree to fight? Only after she said she wouldn't stop casting spells on us until she agreed to face her, she even turned me into a ball. What? That's just downright third. Oh, it gets worse. She used a dangerous amulet to cheat and kick Twilight out of town. The power of the amulet messed with her head and she took over Ponyville. Twilight came back and tricked her into taking off the amulet. She later apologized for what she'd done, but it seems like this Trixie is still a show-off. I don't want to stay here. Me neither, but we have no choice. It's either we spend the night here, or face the blizzard. I would rather face the blizzard, but Mr. Cake is still in no condition to travel. I guess we have to stay. Do you mind if we stay here for the night? I don't think you would make it if we tried to make it to the village now. You may stay in the great and powerful Trixie's wagon. That is, if you don't mind sharing my assistant's cot. She said, pointing to a cot that was way too small for the burly pegasus. Yeah! Wow. And I thought you were pony a few words, Big Macintosh. Yep. There's no way in Tartarus that we're going to fit on that tiny thing. Like, can you imagine all three of us trying to sleep on that tiny bed? No way. There's no way, Jose. No way. Yeah, nope. I think I'll sleep on the floor. <laughs> Very well. Good night, then. Trixie said as she pulled the blanket over herself. One more thing. Hmm? He snores. Trixie warned as she put on earmuffs. Day 2
2 o'clock p.m. Fluttershy really didn't like going so far into the Everfree Forest. There were so many dangerous creatures that dwelt in the supernatural forest. Manticores, Timberwolves, Ursas, Cockatrices, and even a dragon! Fluttershy had faced some of these beasts before, but none of them frightened the timid pigs more than the colossal, fire-breathing monsters. They were the most dangerous and most powerful creatures in the known world. It is said that, like other reptiles, they never stopped growing. They grew larger and more powerful as the years passed by, and they lived for thousands of years. No pony is even sure how long they lived. Some believe that they even live forever. The oldest of their kind could make an Ursa Major run away, screaming in terror. However, Fluttershy was desperately seeking one. Not one of the giant, ferocious, could eat a pony in a single bite full grown dragon, but a baby one instead. Spike was the sweetest, kindest, would never try to even hurt a pony baby dragon she knew. It brought to her eyes to think what could have happened to the poor little guy. No! We have to be strong! For a twilight! And for Spike! Despite her fears, she flew deeper into the forest, hoping to find her missing friend. So, before we head to the bloopers for this chapter, today, if you haven't read the title of the video, it is my 10th year anniversary on YouTube. I have started my channel 10 years ago today. And I never would have thought that I've gotten this much success and this big on the whole community and it originally started out as a gaming channel that I my awkward fiend self um teenage self pretty much played uh, did let's plays and voice impressions as I called them back then um <laughs> Pretty much, I I started uh, dropping out of Let's Plays for my channel, and I did uh, voice acting as a passion, and I'm starting to do voice acting as I want to turn it as a career, and it's also thanks to the brony fandom that i have such a wide array of vas and directors thank you scribbler lost and magpie and also for my friends that helped me through and through for all 10 years 
always 10 years of my channel and I cannot thank you guys enough for making this day special and uh, holy shit I'm crying <laughs> actually I'm starting to tear up um I do have to say I I love all you guys and for supporting me for all these 10 years I just it blows my mind to think how successful I am now when I wasn't like when I was just a little just a teen <laughs> and this this became truly special for me I loved every second of it. I worked so hard all these 10 years to get up to where I am. And it's not easy. It wasn't easy. And I had to say thank you all for coming over here to this premiere and celebrating 10 years of, well, of my YouTube channel. So, I like to thank you all from the very bottom of my heart. And I pretty much, uh, I think that's pretty much it for uh, my speech. So, I will go ahead and uh, segue to the bloopers now. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy it. This has been Agent Fluffy, and I will see you next time. What were you doing out there anyways? Fucking tree? Shut up! Stop petting my camper. Thank you. You may stay in the great and powerful Trixie's wagon. That is, if you don't mind sharing my assistant's cot. <laughs> He's a big bitch. <laughs> uh, well. You may stay in the great and powerful Trixie's wagon. That is, if you don't mind sharing my assistant's cot. Note that I said cot, not ca. You know what I'm. You you know what I was about to say. You know, okay. Leave it at that. <laughs> All right. He snores. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was evil. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, I'm about to record for chapter 9 of The Legend of Spike Discord's Mask. And I'm looking at the script and I'm like, No! <laughs> I had to scream as the freaking babies again! <sighs> Oh, rest in peace, my fucking throat. No, why? Why? <laughs> I had to get a whole bunch of fucking throat lozenges. Okay. Hey. Spike dragged himself out of Big Macintosh's bed and headed to the window. The sky was gray with clouds and it was snowing outside, but at least the scorm. The scorm? Can I read tonight? <laughs> Apparently not. Hold on. 
Oh, I gotta get throat lozenges. <coughs> Baby screaming kills my throat. The three in one body party of a, a body party. <laughs> Can. <laughs> the freaking. Why? Why? It's the alliteration. Fucking shit, man. The three in one body party of adventurers made their way up the steep mount. Steep? <laughs> Can I fucking read tonight? Dear fucking god. The stallion made no reply, but continued to shake uncontrollably. His coat looked more blue than its normer, 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 normer. Can I, can I speak today? 